Good morning, guys. Today we're going to talk about selling and how most of the videos on YouTube will not teach you how to sell. Most of these videos are full of conjecture, theory, and not practical application. And I've literally watched 30 of these videos and not one of them have mentioned this thing. If this is your first time here, my name is Glendon Cameron. I'm your corporate coach. I'm your money coach. I teach people how to start profitable, successful businesses. And, you know, since I've made this pivot to move away from Hustlers Kung Fu and I've changed the content and the training, I have been confronted with some truths. One of the things that you will see here on YouTube in these how to sell videos deal with manipulation, hype, and scams. Here's one thing. As someone who was taught an authentic sales process when I joined Renacrate, one of the first things that we did was qualify our customer to see if they needed our product. That was the first thing. So audience is the most important thing. This whole notion of selling ice to an Eskimo, selling fire to the devil, and this, this is inflated hype because if you're a sales professional, your goal is to serve your customer really well. And if your customer doesn't need your product, adios, goodbye, have a nice day. You don't even want to talk to those people. It's a waste of your time. And literally saw 30, like Dan Locke did one, talking about sell, you know, because essentially what you will see is sell me this pen or sell me this vacuum cleaner. And essentially, I'm a person, if I don't need it, I don't care how good of a salesperson you are. I'm not buying it. And this is how most people are. If they don't need it, you know, it is easier to sell food to a hungry man than to sell food to a full man. It is recommended that you go to the grocery store after you've eaten so you will not be picking up stuff you don't need because you're hungry so one of the things that we're going to get into in the art of holding i may change the name of that to the corporate toolbox because there's a lot of folks who are getting confused um is how to create a sales process so the first thing that you have to do in creating a sales process is not have all of this magic or hustle dust it is first qualify your pro your prospect does my the person that i'm targeting need my product give you an example when i came to youtube in 2009 and i sold my first digital product how to make money a to z with self-storage and auctions i knew that there was a lot of people in my demographic in my audience i didn't know how many and this is a case where my audience became manufactured let me explain that process to you. When Storage Wars, Auction Hunters and stuff came on and introduced people to storage auctions, my audience base exponentially expanded because a lot of people were like, hey, this looks cool. Let me, and then they would go to the internet and look in and they find my blog and they find this YouTube channel. And this got me a lot of sales because my audience was expanding. But here's also another case the storage auction audience expanded and collapsed. I, I was making really good money. I made $62,000 my first year. I made $92,000 my second year. Then I exploded my third year, made 1.5 million. And then my fourth year, 400,000. And then my fifth year, less than 100,000. It was just like, it went up, then it dropped because I had an elastic audience. And if you're marketing, one of the first things you wanna know before you build your business is, are you getting into a marketplace that is expanding or a marketplace that is shrinking? Because building a business, setting all this stuff up can be time consuming, it can be expensive. And why do you wanna set something up for a marketplace that's shrinking? Fortunately for me, I did not spend a lot of money setting up my uh, business with selling my book. So when the marketplace literally collapsed and disappeared, I was still good. But if you are like one of the things, this is something the let's let's talk about the audience in the marketplace. 
the audience of people who need stuff shipped is going to be only so big. There's only going to be so many businesses shipping things by freight. There is a, a, a limit to that. And what's going to happen is as more and more people get into trucking, that limit is going to be exposed. And what's going to happen is you're going to have someone that's going to go out and invest in a truck. They're going to invest in the authority and get it all set up. And they're going to go out to the marketplace and they're going to find it real hard to get business. And that's two to five years away. I feel because <clears throat> there is something called capacity. Like, you know, this is a little different tactic, but YouTube ad capacity is like 30%. They have 70% more ad capacity that they can sell. And at that point, YouTube ads will get really, really competitive. But one of the things, and if you're selling anything, you need to know who your audience is. Who's your customer? Who's your targeted demographic? Literally 30 videos, I not see anyone talk about the most elemental, fundamental aspect of selling. It's all designed for YouTube clicks. But like, let's say you start a cleaning, a home cleaning service. Who is your audience? People who own homes with disposable income. Not everyone that owns a home is your a member of your audience. Because if they don't have to just like, I have a cleaning service. I've had a cleaning service, oh God, last five, six years. And you know, same people, they come and clean my house every two weeks. I am someone with disposable income and I can afford a cleaning service. So if you start a cleaning service and you want to do marketing, who are you going to target? You're going to target people in the nicer zip codes. It doesn't make any sense for you to send mailers to low income zip codes because you're not going to get a lot of business. So it is fundamentally important for you as a business owner to know who you're selling to. Let's go ahead and look at something that has recently happened. I literally had to tear my business apart because my business wasn't properly segmented. Like I have the Savage Financials, which is where the money management course, the credit course, and other financial products will reside. And then I have the Corporate Citizen, where the business school and stuff will reside. And then I have the YouTube Super Creative, which will teach people how to do what I do for a living. Now, this is really, really important because once again, when you're trying to ascertain, like I'm running ads, I will be running ads on YouTube channels that teach people how to do YouTube. Why? These people would be interested in buying a course on teaching them how to do YouTube better. Once again, it makes no sense for me to run how to be a YouTuber on most YouTube channels. Uh, during my research, I found out there's like 60, 65 how to do YouTube channels. I thought there was many more than that. So essentially a lot of kids want to be YouTubers, but I could run YouTube ads on these channels that these kids watch. But guess what? We're going to run into a problem. Going back to the example of starting a cleaning service. People who own homes who have disposable income. So I can run ads on all of this kid friendly content and most of these kids don't have no money. So that would be foolish. See, this is why it's very, very important to know who your customer is or who your potential customer is, who your audience is. This, this is super important. And literally I got tired of watching these videos that were talking about hype, mindset, attitude. I'm going to tell you something. You could be dumb as a wheelbarrow full of bricks and you walk in my office and I hire you to sell hay to farmers. You're not particularly bright. You're not a people person. You're not an extrovert. You can just follow simple instructions. And I was like, Ed, I want you to, when these farmers come in, point them, let them know what the hay is, what the price of the hay is and load it up for them. And as a salesperson, this person would be very, very successful because we're selling hay to farmers who need hay. So he doesn't have to be a genius. He doesn't have to be because essentially when you're selling to your targeted demographic who needs your product, selling is easy. Once again, there are so many uh, felonious, uh, crazy notions about selling. Uh, there are so many erroneous concepts because like 
If you're not interested in starting a business, you shouldn't buy the corporate toolbox. If you're not interested in starting a YouTube channel, you should not get into YouTube super creative. It is selling is real simple. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to prove it to you. When I introduced Hustlers Kung Fu, because it was hustlerskungfu.com, and then I had some issues with the domain name and it was just crazy. So I had to go Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skills. That product was a win because essentially it was teaching people how to hustle. And it was real easy because my first six months, I did like $20,000. My first month, I did 40,000 my second month, and it was doubling, doubling, doubling. And I was just using the YouTube channel. I wasn't using paid traffic. And because I was speaking to an audience that wanted to hustle. See, selling is easy when you're selling the right product to a person who needs the right product. Go, good, good example. We're gonna use you. Let's say you need a hammer and you've got some t some task around the house where you need a hammer and you go in the Lowe's, what do you do? You go straight to the hammer section, you buy a hammer and you leave. Did Lowe's have to do anything special? Did Lowe's have to run any creative ads? No, I need a hammer. Let me go to Lowe's, let me go to Ace Hardware and pick up this hammer. Very, very easy sell. But when you start selling some stuff that people don't want, selling is very, very hard. Selling is like, this is one of the things, and I'm embarrassed by this, but I was putting out a bunch of products that no one wanted because I would put out a product and it, like, it would be a week or two and I get one or two sales. That let me know that I had a turkey on my hand. The product, the offer wasn't good. This is one of the reasons I tore down my business because I want to prep each platform for cold traffic as well as warm traffic. Virtually no one on YouTube is talking about warm traffic, uh, cold traffic. They're, they're doing stuff to get YouTube clicks. They're doing stuff to trigger the algorithm. They're not doing stuff to really actually give you the information and the training and the help that you actually need to start a successful business because I've been looking all day because essentially when I joined Rental Crate, I was taught a professional selling method. First of all, we had targets. These were businesses we very much wanted to do business with. Then we had some side businesses that were okay if we got their business, but guess what we focused most of our marketing efforts on? The targets. Because we knew who our customer was. These were Fortune 1000 companies that had a lot of internal churn and moves. And this was someone that we can give our, sell our products to and get services and make money. I was developed a professional selling methodology. And most of this crap, I'm gonna say this crap on YouTube, because here's the thing. If you think selling something to someone is about manipulation, creativity, or any of this other garbage, that to get someone to buy something that they don't need, that they don't have a use for, you're not learning how to sell because at the end of the day, when I was selling commercial office furniture and my biggest deal was like, um, it was a joint deal. It wasn't just me. It was like $3.2 million. They were literally buying three buildings up at choice point and we sold them office furniture. Do you think I felt guilty or bad after that sale? I felt good because they needed office furniture. So if you're selling something that makes you feel a little spammy or bad, more than likely you're selling a crappy product and you know it because this is one of the reasons that i can come up here and like hey you know if you want to become an, uh, a corporate citizen enroll in the art of holding because i know it's a good product i don't feel bad or scammy for charging I, I don't feel any of that i don't have any doubts or any um issues or any i, I don't have none of that because i am selling products that help people but if you're selling some bull crap, more than likely you're gonna have some issues, more than likely. And this is one of the things because um, my whole new agenda and the way that I'm looking at stuff with uh, a new vision, a new perspective, is a lot of stuff on YouTube is designed to get clicks. It isn't designed to be helpful or informative. It's designed to trigger the YouTube algorithm to get views whether it's particularly helpful or not. Like 
on Savage Finance because one of the things I'm doing is I'm pivoting here and I'm pivoting at Savage Finance because in my YouTube mastermind, I've learned that the content you put out, which is a form of direct response marketing, will trigger your audience. So I'm gonna change the audience over here and I'm gonna change the audience over there. And I am going to deal with the reduction in views, you know, cause essentially as a YouTuber, you like to see your views go up in each and every month, but I'm like bump that noise. Cause I am about to build something that is gonna be worthy. And like this information, like go ahead, how to sell. Google, go to YouTube, put up in the search bar, how to sell and see how many videos actually talk about demographics, audiences and marketplaces, which is where you start with the selling process. You don't start with the service. You don't start with the product. You start with the audience because the audience will determine how successful you will be. You can start a business, start a holding company and get your corporate banking and business and do all that stuff correctly. But if you're selling to the wrong audience or you don't know who your audience is or you don't know how to sell to your audience, you're gonna fail. You're gonna fail. And this is something that no one is talking about. It's all about these fancy tactics and what I call hoospa selling, confidence selling, mindset selling. Like simply going back to the example, if I had a factory that produced hay and I went out and got somebody who wasn't a, an extrovert who wasn't even a salesman, but he could follow simple instructions. This would be an excellent salesman of hay because the people who are coming in, they need hay. It's not a hard sell when you're selling something that a person needs. It's not a hard sell. And th this, this is one of the things because this was an issue that I was having. Uh, when I was selling the YouTube product, I, I ran into some issues because I worked on the creative, I worked on the webinar, and then when they got to the landing page, it was confusing. It wasn't a good representation of what I was trying to do. And once again, once I got that information, I tore down my business and uh, there's a lot of people who are confused and they got a lot of questions. You want to know why? Because you're not getting real business content here on YouTube. You're getting tactics, you're getting template stuff, but I am, I'm not going to say I'm the only one. I'm the only one that I know of that is talking about how to build a business from scratch, how to actually create a real sales process that is incumbent upon knowing who your audience is and targeting your audience. If you're trying to sell children's clothing, you wouldn't be marketing to adults, you'd be marketing to mothers. That's your audience. The mothers buy the clothing, so you would be designing and aiming your marketing to mothers. You would not be advertising children's clothing in a motorcycle magazine you wouldn't do that it makes no sense yet here on youtube it is disgusting how many people will talk about a video talking about how to sell and they'll talk about certain selling techniques which are valid but they never mention audience demographics or marketplace never you think these fortune 500 you know these fortune 500 companies devote millions of dollars to departments that research this stuff. They research this stuff. They spend millions of dollars researching this because they know that if they hit with the right audience, they're gonna make money. Every Fortune 1000 company does this. BMW, like I am a member of the Porsche audience and I get emails from them and everything because I bought two and once you know who your customer is, know your audience, once you can get in their mind, this makes better creative, this makes better marketing. But once again, you know, we're, we're getting ready to start cooking with some gas here because I see a wide open lane that no one's really talking about how to start businesses from scratch, selling processes, marketing. It is all of this internet clickbait stuff and no real, real serious content. So. You're starting the business, the first thing you need to research before you start your LLC, before you spend any money, is who you're gonna be selling your product or service to and how bad they need it. If you do that, your success is assured. Your success is assured. Once again, uh, one of the things that you're seeing right now is a lot of template businesses or what I like to call ethically comfortable 
business models. Uh, one of my haters left this like, um, talking about another YouTuber who opened up a restaurant. This is a typical business for black folks. Restaurants, barber shops, now trucking's becoming a business, Jamaican, you know, these are typical businesses. And I want to expand the conversation. There's nothing wrong with starting a barber shop and there's nothing wrong with starting a restaurant. But we as black folks are way too heavy in those industries and we are not present. Like when I was selling commercial office furniture, I never saw a black commercial real estate agent. When I got in business, I ran into quite a few. So things have changed quite a bit since then. Uh, I never saw when I would go network with these people and there was this thing called Neocon where facility managers would come to look at products and there was me and Mario Fraley. We were the only two black representatives of our company on the floor in this whole ne And Neocon was 300 people representing their companies and it was two black folks. So we're gonna talk about expanding the perspective and getting into more businesses because there's so many businesses out there, y'all. There's so many things you could do to make money. And when I get my Real Entrepreneurs, Real Business series going, I'm gonna show you some. I'm gonna be looking for these people and I'm gonna interview them and I'm bring them on the show. Because, uh, man, they're, they're, they're like, I'm kind of excited because this lane is so wide open because there's nobody in it. There's nobody in it. I'm just sitting there like, really? This is gonna be good. We're gonna start cooking with gas. So if you want to start a business, and learn how to set up your holding company, set up your operating companies, set up your corporate structure, and more importantly, learn how to start a business from scratch, enroll in the art of holding. The link is below. Now, essentially, if you, pay, you, you go ahead and pay in full, you get immediate access. And if you're on a payment plan, give us 24 to 48 hours um, to add you to it, because once again, the payment plans, PayPal gives me actually way more flexibility than Stripe does. Because Stripe, once you miss your payment, you, you're booted out and you just have to resubscribe. With PayPal, I have more options. So the link's below. Hopefully you enjoyed the conversation. And put in the comments, what do you think selling is? I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next one.